Hey, my name is Ryan here with Chosen Society. We produce uh, Christian-based content uh, for this dying world. And uh, in this video, this is probably gonna be the, one of the most drastically different videos that I've ever produced. Um, and it's going to be talking specifically about uh, this uh, allegation uh, with Cassie uh, accusing uh, Diddy of abuse, um, and then also uh, with rape. And so again, if you have a very sensitive ear or you're in a place where you cannot listen to sensitive uh, based content, then I would probably advise you to just click off this video. But if you would like to learn wisdom and insight and truth um, that I'm going to reveal, especially to men, um, I think this may be one of the most important videos that you see today. So do me a quick favor, stay to this end of this video, um, listen objectively to some of the insights that I wanna share with you. I want to first, um do my godly best um and in helping us as a society uh understand you know both sides of of of, of what's going on um and just uh just peel back some truth one of the first things the truths i want to get out of the way is that i myself have been the victim of of sexual abuse um and and a lot of times uh, you know men are afraid to to share that and so some of the places i'm coming from is that is just to address some of the the negative things that I've seen um, that have been said online, and just to get us to think differently about how we treat people, especially when people come forward with uh, claims of abuse. And so, um, everything that I'm going to just talk about is just the truth of the matter. Um, nothing that I'm going to say is going to just dive, uh, you know, into the gossip gossip be part of this uh, conversation but i want to bring biblical truth uh, to you guys on today and so the first thing that i just want to get out of the way is that the bible lets us know that um for us to not let our good be evil spoken of and so one of the things that we see here in this particular uh, allegation um I, I saw an overwhelming number of people you know say that they could see diddy um having done some of these horrendous things and so one of the first questions that comes to mind as an observer is how how do we get here how do we get here where there's there's thousands tens of thousands maybe hundreds of thousands of people who automatically believe that you are guilty of perpetrating um heinous or unjust things on another human being and one of the things that i think that we have to unpack as a society is that um the bible lets us know that a, a a double-minded man is unstable in all their ways. And so um, one way that one of my mentors has translated this and how it, this has been actually applicable in my life is how a man does one thing is how his chances are is how he's going to do everything in his life, right? So um, there's, there's patterns and there's things that we can see in a person's life. And so one of the things that I'm, I'm assuming is an obvious pattern that we can see um, in, in Diddy's life and how we can just learn from this is that, um, you know, growing up, I was a fan of the music um, and growing up, you know, I saw that he built this big record uh, conglomerate. And one of the things that he's infamously known for is that his business practices um, have been malicious and they have been uh, predatory, uh, you know, not giving artists their masters or you know parts of their publishing and so people automatically view him as a person who is a thief as a person who um is conniving and so when we think about abuse some of the things that we think about is those same um attributes can be carried over uh when when we're, when we're thinking about physical abuse or we're thinking about sexual abuse and so as a godly man what we must do every day is um, and this is some insight that the Lord has given me personally, is just to assume um, that you're being recorded 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? Because especially for those of us who are called to ministry, if we're called to uh, do something great in the kingdom, we just must assume that we're being recorded. Like, I mean, obviously in most situations, we're not being recorded, but the Lord is with us, right? Someone is always watching. And so we have to ask ourselves before we do anything is what i'm about to do am i comfortable would i be comfortable with with what i'm about to do being recorded if if what i'm about to do um is not something that i would be comfortable uh with the world seeing it 
um, then we have to begin to ask ourselves, should it be something that I'm doing? And so um, another point that I want to just uh, just address in this whole particular situation um, is the fact that, you know, I, I have been in a situation where I've created uh, means for myself. And one of the things that, that starts to rise up uh, almost immediately is like this spirit of pride. When you're able to do whatever you want, whenever you want, uh, financially, um, you start to develop this like, um, you know, almost like godlike complex that you can do no wrong. And I would, I would assume that right now, that you know, being around other successful people, being around other wealthy individuals, one of the things that I learned that it's it's hard for them to um, to have people in their life that's going to tell them no, right? If they have somebody that's going to tell them no and tell them the truth, that you know they can see their you know money being cut off their supply being cut off and this is why the, that you know people who are successful a lot of times they have people around them who just tell them yes to all the time and so when you've been conditioned and you are in an environment that has bred you to only hear yes all the time when somebody finally tells you no um, it could put you in a situation where you feel absolutely angry and it, it could lead you to doing certain things that um that you wouldn't normally do. And so one thing that I just want us all to consider whether we have an opinion on this case or not, and it's probably one of the first things that I should have pointed out is that um, every day we all have sin, we all have fallen short. And so it's very easy to, for us to like make a very pointed opinion about somebody else and their shortcomings, especially when it's in the public eye and it's in, in, in not take that same type of calculation and uh, observe our own wrongdoings. And so one of the things that the Bible teaches us um, and that we should understand is that, you know, we as humans, we put this hierarchy on sin, right? Which sin is more deplorable than another sin? When the word of God doesn't really um, differentiate, uh, you know, the the levels of sin, right? And it just sees all sin is sin, right? We all have fallen short. We all have uh, done things that would put us and make us pun punishable of receiving death and going to hell if we don't choose Jesus Christ to be our personal Lord and Savior, who the person who will redeem us from those sins, right? And so um, it's easy to get caught up in pointing fingers. It's easy to get caught up in just like celebrating somebody's demise when we personally have sin in our lives every day, and right? And so like we, 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 we start making uh, and vilifying these people when they've been accused of these heinous things. But we have to look in the mirror. We have to consider um, our own ways every single day. Are we actively involved in sin, right? Um, if we had a camera in our face, if we had somebody recording our every uh, thoughts and moments, how many things would we be um, accused of every single day, right? And so the, the one of the last things that I just wanted to, to talk about um, is just, um, I guess, from, from Cassie's side of this, um, you know, I have been the victim of abuse. And for me, I, one of the, 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 the craziest things that I'm seeing online is that people specifically are pointing out this one fact. They're saying like, you know, if, if Cassie was really abused for all these years, why is she just now speaking up, right? Is it because of money? Is it because of, you know, all these things that people are, 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 are adding to the story? And one of the things that I would just tell you as being a, a victim of of abuse myself is that that the the abuse in and of itself is so humiliate humiliating it's so embarrassing um it's so shaming it's so such a thing that that makes you feel guilty you don't want to um publicly talk about it you don't want to even admit it to yourself and sometimes um you know i found out from just having conversations with other people who have been abused uh the lord has allowed me to 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 speak you know confidentially in these people's lives and one of the things i found out is that most victims of abuse um unless it's something heinous like you know like specifically like rape um and even oftentimes in those cases with rape itself there are people who don't even realize they've been victimized because they they can't see themselves as being this victim right they 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 go blank their their mind shuts off they 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 freeze up uh, or they go into a situation where they believe you know like if they were to tell somebody else what would it do right 
um, especially when you're going up against a person who has influence, uh, who has wealth, who has means to uh, make a story disappear, when that person has the means to make you physically disappear, whatever the case may be. And so there's there's been so many harsh things that you know people are saying about uh, Cassie and why she didn't speak up. And I just wanna just tell you from personal experience, there's a lot of reasons why people don't speak up. You know, for me, I was embarrassed that, you know, of the fact that, um, you know, that I was molested by a man and a person who was, uh, who called themselves a man of God. And so, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a multitude of reasons why people won't speak on their abuse. Um, you could be abused and not say anything. Um, and so I just want to just, you know, address these three uh, key points and just let you know that um, just like we see in the case of Solomon, you know, a lot of people have, you know, come to the point where they idolize celebrity, they idolize people um, who have wealth. But one of the interesting things that Solomon had to find out the hard way is that wealth and celebrity and fame and all these things that they all they all are vanity, right? And the only thing that that matters is you coming to the understanding that God created you for a purpose, that God sent you here for a reason to do something good in this world. And that's what we should be focusing most of our time um, and, and pretty much all of our time doing is doing the good that God has called us to do. And so for you, um, if, you're, if you're idolizing these people, if you're putting these people on pedestals, if you're judging them too harshly, um, I want you to, to today to just consider your ways and just let you know that no matter what you've done, no matter what sin that you've that you've done and committed your, in your own life because you have committed sin, right? The Bible lets us know that all we like sheep have gone astray. So every person from the top down, from the most popular pastor uh, with the largest church to the person um, who is the, the, the Satanist or the, the person who's like Hitler, right? And committed atrocities. Like we have all sinned and we all fall short. And so that's the reason why we all need a savior. We need someone who is going to atone our sins who is going to put us back in right relationship and right standing with god and there was a a person who came here to this physical world god himself wrapped himself in flesh and he came to this physical world to atone us uh of our sins and to put us back into fellowship uh, with God the Father. And so uh, one thing that I just want to just speak in your life, if you have not um, received this love and have not received this repaired relationship, I want to invite you now, again, this video may get thousands of views, this may video get, may get no views, um, who knows? But if you're seeing this moment, video right now at this moment, and you have not given your life uh, to God. Um, I want, to do, want you to do that right now. Um, the Bible lets us know that if we um, ourselves, right, because we were born into a sinful world, if we do not confess our sins, if we do not um, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and He came here to redeem us of our sins, right? That He lived, that He walked around just like us, and He He lived a perfect life. He He committed no sins, right? If we do not believe that He existed, that He committed no sins, that He lived a perfect life just so that He could die on a cross, uh, go to uh, the grave for three days, be resurrected. Um, so that we could have a right relationship with God. If you do not believe that, then I just want you just to repeat after me. Father God, I just want to thank you for uh, this opportunity to get to know you. Um, Jesus, I invite you into my heart. I invite you to be the Lord of my life. Forgive me for every sin that I've committed, for every sinful thought that I have had. And I would love for you to accept me into your royal family. I believe that you came, that you died, and you rose for my sins. And so I choose to accept you into my life as my personal Lord and Savior. I will follow you. I will trust you. And I will let you lead my life every single day of my life from here now on out. And I thank you for this right now in Jesus' name. So I believe right now, if you pray that prayer with me, that you have been saved, you have been called to something great. And so what I want you to do, if you prayed that prayer with me, if this is your first time that you invited Jesus Christ to be your personal Lord and Savior, um, I would love for you to go ahead and text the phone number 702-608-1689. Text the word SAVED to 702-608-1689. And no matter where you are in the world, um, I would 
try to do my godly best to connect you with some more information that's going to help lead you on a walk where you get to know um, Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, where he can lead you and guide you and direct you so that you don't fall into the same sins, you don't fall into the temptation of this world and end up with these types of allegations and these things uh, set before you. Uh, like these people have. So um, God bless you guys on today. Um, I love you guys. Like this video, share this with somebody else, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.